Welcome back to Big T's Chop Shop. This week we got a pretty interesting problem in the shop. Some friends of ours came by and asked if we could help to modify the valve landings in the surface of this piston head. And although the machining problem to do that isn't really that complicated, it was a bit of a head scratcher in terms of how we were going to generate the geometry in order to do this. We thought about 3D scanning, but that can be difficult on shiny surfaces like this, and we don't have one in-house. So I was wondering about whether we could use a CNC probe in order to sample the surface of the piston and generate the reference geometry. Here's a little technique that I came up with that seemed to work fairly well. So hopefully it can help you if you have a similar challenge. The first thing here is for us to get our hands on the Smart Probe NGC script. So Smart Probe NGC is part of Linux CNC, which Pathpilot was based on um, back in the day. I think it's um, come a long way since then, obviously, but um, the script is still compatible. So it's available from the Linux CNC GitHub. Um, you can see the basics here. We're going to go through it in detail because I modified it a little bit to do what I wanted it to do. But at its core, um, you basically set your units, the speed at which you want your probing routine to run, um, basic XY containment for how um, big an area you're going to probe, and then your uh, Z settings for how high you want to lift in between um, to move safely and how deep you're going to probe. And then the rest um, we'll get into a bit in my script. So. That's the basic script. That's the basic premise of what you're going to be running. So this is my version of the Smart Probe NGC script. I made a few changes, um, mostly to the way I was storing the data so that it was a file format that could be read in by Excel more easily. I just end up storing in a text file, as you can see here. Um, and then I made a slight change to the probing routines I'll show you below. So I'm probing in inches. I slowed down my probe speed a little bit. I'm using a wireless probe that um, likes to move a little bit more slowly to be consistent for where the hits occur. Um, set up my basic parameters. My object's about three inches in diameter. So um, I travel from negative 1.5 inches in 0.04 inch steps, and I do 76 of those. So that gets me across the face of my piston. Um, and, and then obviously it's round, so same parameters on Y. I left the Z settings alone, so um, I raised the probe to 1.1 inches to move and um, probe down as far as 0.25. That um, means that uh, you know if I bottom out and I don't touch anything, I won't over travel and have a collision. So in my particular case, those settings worked well. You need to be careful with that and be aware of where you set your zero and your um, basically your work origin to be on your machine but for my case that works just fine um, so basically my data is going into a file called probe results.txt and one thing to note is they um, this is a little unclear because of the Linux CNC origin of it where it says um, the results are going in the same directory as the any e file I'll show you that on the actual controller where it ends up but it's just the root of the path pilot files so um, easy enough to find. Now this loop is pretty straightforward basically um, the machine is going to step across um, probing in in Z and um, I made one little change down below which I'm going to show you which is pretty important. I added these comments in here just so that it was more obvious what um, the functions were doing. So a 38.5 probes away from a part, stops on loss of contact, a 38.3 probes down towards the part, stopping on contact. What was a little bit unclear or didn't work right out of the box for me was that this comes as a 38.2 here, which is um, probe towards stop on contact and error of failure. So what was happening was um, basically I would travel if I missed the part or I was probing into open air, the program would actually halt because it would error out when it got to the um, Z depth of 0. Point, or negative 0.25. So 
I ended up changing this to a 38.3, which is um, the same um, call here. And then what the behavior ends up being is if um, the probe doesn't make contact on the way down, if it's um, Z travel in our case 0.25, um, it'll jog over in um, the X direction and look for a touch. So um, you'll see what that looks like on the machine, but that basically makes it so that um, if we bottom out without touching, we just get a negative 0 0.25 entered in for that XY location and the program doesn't stop. Um, then the final other change I made was to store it into a um, pure text file format, which is just space delimited. Um, and I removed the um, X, uh, X, Y, and Z. So originally it was uh, writing a G1, X, Y, Z into the um, um, data fields. I just want um, the three coordinates space delimited. Makes it a little bit easier for me to parse that in the next step. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the script that gets loaded into PathPilot and run. And um, we'll take a look at the machine now and see what happens when you Start that up. Loading up the script in PathPilot is super straightforward. You just go to the folder where you've stored your Smart Probe NGC script, load that, and then PathPilot will um, actually even show you the preview of what it's about to execute, which is actually quite, quite cool. I didn't expect that. So let's fire that up. When the sampling process is completed, you can find the results in the root folder of the PathPilot install. The quickest way to get there is to just push the home button here in PathPilot. And you'll see we have proberesults.txt, which has our data values from the sampling stored inside the file. So this is the raw data that came off of the probing run uh, before we've done any modifications to it. I just wanted to have a quick look at it to see what it looked like. It's pretty much what you could expect. You see it stepping through the um, basically XY grid pattern and then measuring Z along the way. Um, you can see the negative 0.25s where it bottomed out and didn't touch, but otherwise um, we seem to have reasonable values. So we're gonna load this uh, up in Excel because I think there's um, a little bit of a tweak we can do to discard some of these values so that we don't have as much extra data to process as we um, move it through the pipeline. So next thing is we're going to load our data up into Excel. I want to um, basically um, clean it up a little bit and get rid of those uh, no touch points because I don't think they'll be helpful to the rest of the process. So I'm pulling it in. Um, telling Excel that it's space delimited data so that we can get the um, XYZs into the right columns and um, then we're good to go. So that's the same data that we saw in raw format just split into columns now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort it by um, the Z heights and then get rid of um, you know get rid of the obvious points where it didn't make contact. So we are sorting by column C. We're going to sort the smallest to largest. And that gives us um, our Z values um, by height. So what I'm going to do is just wipe out those rows. Going down. So you can see there's quite a few points that we're going to be able to get rid of here. Even these these point two four nine nines. I mean that's just a data error. So really anything that doesn't look significant, um, this is probably the start of the real data here. So we're just going to get rid of all those rows, and now we should be left just with real data. And we're going to save that file, and on to the next step.
The next stop in our process here is to load the data into MeshLab to create a mesh from the point cloud that we sampled. I will say I'm by no means an expert on this part of the process, but I did find that most of the defaults in MeshLab created a reasonable output for me. So I'm not going to get into the details of that. Um, I know there's different tutorials and things around, um, but I just want to show you the basic process of what I did. So at this point I can um, import the data and pull in my probe results. MeshLab realizes um, you know, that it's a text file, it's space separated, so that all works. This part's probably going to be a bit hard to see in the sense that um, these points are pretty fine, um, so you may not be able to see them on your screen, but the next step here will make it a little bit, little bit better. So the very first thing is that we need to create a set of surface normals for um, those points. So again, I'm going with the basics. It seemed to me like the defaults here were perfectly reasonable. So we have our normals. Um, and you can kind of see the, the general shape of what we sampled there starting to show through. Um, and then we run the next filter, um, which I use this uh, marching cubes algorithm. Again, I'm sure there's a lot more detail here and a lot more subtlety to the parameters and whatnot, but for the sake of what we're doing here in the example, uh, I just ran with the defaults and it generated pretty good geometry. So now we can see that we've definitely got the head of the piston coming through here, which is, which is really, really cool to see. Um, if we turn off the points, it uh, becomes a little more clear. So for me, um, my intent was kind of to be able to, um, you know, pick off some of these angles and, and where these features were located and stuff. This is actually probably perfectly adequate for um, what I'm planning to do with it. Um, I think it's also pretty obvious that, you know, it's not super, super high fidelity. Um, obviously with the probe tip being a ball and some of the noise of the sampling and whatnot, um, you know, it is what it is, but honestly, this is, this is perfectly good for my purposes. So I'm happy with that. So then, um, basically I, um, export this mesh into an OBJ file. I just found through sort of trial and error, that was one of the for, uh, formats that worked the best for me. Um, you can also do an STL file. I think that would work with Fusion. Um, but um, I found S, uh, OBJ was just fine. Over in Fusion 360, the process to insert a mesh is, is pretty straightforward as long as you get a valid mesh um, out of your previous step. Um, now, grab our mesh, we have uh, the piston, and uh, there it is. I'm going to flip it so that um, the top of the piston is aligned with the top plane in Fusion. But other than that, um, pretty straightforward. So there's our mesh geometry. Now again, I'm not going to get into all the details of manipulating meshes inside of Fusion, but I did want to just kind of do a basic accuracy check and see how things see how things look. So I'm just going to create a sketch um, in the top plane and I know that my piston is exactly three inches so I want to check my um, dimensions here just do a basic basic check. So I'm drawing a three inch um, circle. I'm going to finish that sketch and select it just to make it easier to see. So that looks entirely reasonable. Um, we've got good samples in the three inch boundary on the surface of the piston. And when I rotate it, um, it's a little too much there, but when I rotate it, um, basically I had my work zero set to the very middle of the piston and these edges are slightly raised. So when I look at the profile here, um, that looks entirely sane. So um, yeah, so basically that's the process. We went from um, touching off with the um, probe, generating the point cloud, going through mesh lab and uh, outputting an OBJ. And now I've got it inside of Fusion 360 and I can use it as a reference for my modeling operations. 
So there we go. I didn't really know how this was gonna turn out before I tried the experiment, and I'm pretty happy with the results. It got me what I needed in terms of the reference geometry in order to be able to start modeling those features inside of Fusion 360. Hopefully this will be useful to you or to somebody that's trying to do a similar thing. Please feel free to share, comment down below. We'll see you next time on Big T's Chop Shop.